This is Franchise Fred at Comic-Con. We're in the press room for the TV sequel to Minority Report, and I can't wait to talk to the creators of the TV version and the cast. When we talked last uh, for From Dusk Till Dawn, you said you had big things coming you couldn't announce yet. Was Minority Report one of them? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was, uh, you know, this, this was a really exciting next chapter for me, you know, and in the same year to be working with Robert Rodriguez and, and Steven Spielberg, I mean, it was kind of like a little boy's dream when I was young, you know, I was 14 years old saying, one day I'm going to work with Robert, and I cannot wait to be in a Steven Spielberg, you know, project, and um, and it just kind of worked out really exciting, you know, I mean, to, to be in From the Salon and Minority Report in the same year, it is, I mean, it's, it's kind of crazy, you know. Hello, Laura. Hi, thank you. Uh, so Agatha was one of the Agatha was one of the important characters from the movie Minority Report. Did that give you a real sense of connection to the film? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I loved the film and especially the character of Agatha. Um, so it's a great starting point. It's she has such a sort of rich mythology, such a strange history that yeah, it's a great jumping off point for our series. Mm -hmm. You're not bald in the series, though, are you? <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm waiting for the note that they're like, when I read in the script on page, and Agatha with know. bald head, I'm like, oh, oh my no. head. No, I'll do whatever they say, though. <laughs> I'll do it. Can you guys give a profile of your characters as if you were writing a, like an online dating profile? Oh, sure. Um, oh, I'll start. Complicated. Uh, she is uh, has a history Stick. unlike anyone you've ever known. Um, Subject to threatening visions, haunting murders. Um, <laughs> I don't think funny. she'd be chosen by anybody. <laughs> very, very funny. Um, so, Lieutenant Will Blake, right? Uh, expert. He's going to have a higher profile. He's going to be like, yeah. I'm, well, yeah. I'm the overachiever. I'm, I'm like the A. Uh, he gets a straight A guy. Um, he's uh, ex Marine, you know, he's now Lieutenant of the Precinct that, you know, that. Uh, the Laura Vega, uh, Laura Vega uh, uh, works at. He's uh, he's confident. He's funny. He's fun. Loves walks on the beach, um, and um, and likes driving fast. Hi, Daryl. How are you? Well, the movie asks a fascinating question, which is: if you arrest people before they commit a crime, should you still imprison them? I say unequivocally, no. There's no need. Pre-crime is 100% effective. You will always stop them from preventing crimes. So does your show delve deeper into that question? We do delve deeply into that. I mean, there's, there's many, many cases and many, many episodes where they reach the person before, they, before they've done the crime, but they know the person is going to do that crime. What do you do then? Do you just sit and wait? Do you, um, do you arrest them? Do you try and get them to do it? Do you try and get them not to do it? And I think all of those are really interesting things to play with in the show. Well, when it was uh, over 10 years ago when Minority Report, the movie presented a vision of the future, you know, with uh, directed ad, personalized directed ads and all these things, a lot of which have come true in the last 10 years. So is there more, how do you look further ahead to the future for the Minority Report series? Well, there's a lot of, a lot of pressure to do, sort of to take what uh, the movie did and do it, you know, one step further. What we've done is we've hired a, a group of futurists um, that work at the MIT Film Lab, um, and um, one of them who I think, uh, you know, um, is you know, our, our lead guy, who basically is always looking at sort of trends um, in society and relationships and law enforcement that's advising the writers and sort of giving them ideas on sort of what's next to come, and that's how we do it. Well, Spielberg used futurists on the movie also. Are any of them the same? No, we don't have any of the futurists from the movie. We have all new people. Yes. So is the Minority Report series a world in which John Anderton exists still? He is not mentioned in the in the pilot, but um, the movie is canon for the television show. So John Anderton is somebody that would have existed, and he will be referenced in the um, in the television series. Well, I mean, the the movie, a concept like Minority Report, uh, asks so many questions and different permutations. Is a series an even better way to explore that where you have a different hour every week to have a new story rather than a movie where even if there's a sequel, it could be years before you get to tell another story in that world? Yeah, I mean, that's the advantage of doing a television series is that every week you can take a new future um, crime or future tech and use it in a procedural story. And then the other great thing about being able to do 
what you can do in series that you can't do in a movie is you can grow these characters over many, many seasons, uh, many, many episodes. And that's what we're really looking forward to in terms of the precogs, is sort of putting flesh and bones on these precogs. They're not just um, sort of machines in a milk bath. They're fully breathing entities. Hi, Nerd Report. I'm Max Bornstein, creator, executive producer of Minority right. Report. Well, Max, my big question is, the movie Minority Report asks a fascinating question, which is, if you can prevent someone from committing a crime, do you still imprison them? I say, unequivocally, no. Pre-crime is 100% effective. You will always stop them before it happens. Mm -hmm. So how does the show delve deeper into that question? Well, the show delves deeper because pre-crime doesn't exist anymore. At the end of the film, the pre-crime pro program is abolished exactly for that, that reason, because it's on the one hand attractive to stop murders before they can strike and on the other hand it's deeply unethical to not give people a chance to change their future if you see it coming and now we are ten years later and we follow from the perspective of the precogs, the three precogs who were essentially just a computer and an antenna for the pre-crime system, now they're living in anonymity and witness protection in the world, and yet they have, they still see these visions, and they are driven from an ethical place to try to stop these things themselves, and they have to do it illegally. But the question becomes, what do you do? Do you Jack Bauer? Because if you know someone's going to commit a murder, do you tie them up, or do you torture them, or do you, if you have no evidence, or do you try to do it? Ethically, can you somehow manage to get to know people to, to prevent those, that, pin, that, that cue ball from going into the pocket? Can you knock it out of the way with another ball? So we're, really, we're going head on into that ethical question, uh, which is the fun of the show. Absolutely, because the the movie you know was supposed to be well, it's ten years ago in this world. So now it's two th it's t blah, 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 twenty sixty five. Thank you, Lordy, my brain. I'm um, twenty sixty five. So it is you know the same world is a continuation, but it's also a different world. We're picking it up from different characters, like myself. Stark's character was in the original movie, but you didn't really get introduced to him until this moment, and you start to see it from his perspective. You know, Agatha is in the movie, and she was an original character. Um, Wally was in the movie, he was an original character, but me and Wilmer are new characters that you know now we work for the PD mm -hmm. and you know now we're trying to get a leg up and change the world and make it a better place. So. In a way it's a spin-off you know you're yeah. picking a character who had a small part in the movie and exploring what their life is like and I like that it's it's, yeah. it's more interesting than just rebooting the series. 